Those there are still plenty of voices whose stories are yet to be told. And tonight we acknowledge change made right here in the Midlands back in the 1960s. Our Sam Shapiro joins us live in the studio now to tell us a little bit more about this local trailblazer. Sam? Yeah, Greg, also known by her nickname Libby, Elizabeth Davis Dunlap was born in Newberry back in 1951. She grew up in segregated Newberry through the 50s and the 60s, and now she hopes her life will inspire and educate others. Dunlap was the youngest daughter out of 10 children and second youngest child in her family. While growing up, she recalls seeing a KKK member burning a cross in her neighborhood when she was about 10 years old. She remembers the movie theater she went to was segregated, only allowing her to watch movies from the balcony and not on the main level. And our entrance was down um, a sidewalk through the side door to walk back up to the top. And it was what we knew. We didn't know anything differently. So that's what we accepted. Dunlap recalls having to take precautions while out and about in public. She says she constantly had to be aware of her surroundings, having to stay away from certain areas in downtown Newberry. I didn't understand that there was opportunities for persons to be included in other things. So I lived in a segregated neighborhood where you just stayed in your neighborhood, you didn't go through neighborhoods of people who didn't look like you, um, and you just lived with and survived around your family. Dunlap says she's always tried her best in school while being involved in her community. She feels this is why her family, who she says is still her rock today, supported her dream to pursue education and go to school. In the fall of 1966, the freedom of choice policy allowed her to start at Newberry High School in 10th grade. She says she was the only black girl in most of her classes and the only one on the high school's basketball team. In 1969, Dunlap graduated from Newberry High School and became the third of her siblings to go to college. We were given the choice that if we wanted to go to the predominantly white school, we could, but we had to get our own transportation. Uh, to get there. And um, my family supported me in doing that. She would go on to attend Winthrop University when it was an all women institution. During her time there, she studied physical education. After graduating, she eventually moved up north to Connecticut, where she would work her way up to becoming an elementary school principal. She worked in education for over three decades before teaching at USC. She hopes the younger generations can take lessons away from the ones before her and use it to make their future a bright one. We, the older generation, as my older generation, just try to give what we grew up to help us to pass on to you so that you can just not hold on to it, but make it available for the next generation. Too often, I think, what we're doing now is allowing our history to vanish. Wow, what, just incredible courage. What a warrior. Absolutely, and you know, me and, uh, me and Elizabeth had great conversations about how she was a, a special education yeah. ed educator, and you know, growing up a, with an IEP myself, you know, just hearing those stories, how she's just touched so many lives you know, as an educator, but now also through her life, I think it's a double entendre. Yeah, you know, it's uh, making sure that the legacy lives on. Just incredible. All right, thanks, Sam. We appreciate that. My pleasure, Greg. You bet. All right, let's get over to Chief Meteorologist Adam Clark, taking a look at some storms that have rolled through the area. Adam? Yeah, guys, we have.